Uh, let me um, let me start then. Um, everyone can hear me, I guess. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a, a topic I've been working on off and on for the last uh, few years. Uh, in this, uh, I'll start out in this first half, I'll uh, review some basic things about uh, multiplicities and mixed multiplicities of ideals, and then the theory for filtrations. And uh, in the second half, I'll talk about uh, characterizing uh, for filtrations uh, when uh, the uh, Minkowski equality holds. Uh, so uh, in this talk, uh, R, will be a local ring and uh, local rings are uh, no Ethereum in this talk. Uh, so first off, I'll define an M filtration. M filtration is a family of ideals I, which is I to the N, where n ranges over the natural numbers, r is equal to i0 containing i1, containing i2, and so on, where the i n are m primary for n bigger than zero. And the uh, essential assumption is that i i times i sub j is contained in i sub i plus j for all i j. And I will say that I is a no Ethereum filtration if the R algebra, the graded R algebra, n bigger and equal to zero I sub n is a finitely generated R algebra. Okay, so uh, let's begin by uh, looking at uh, some examples illustrating uh, what a filtration is. Okay, so the, uh, the first example uh, is of the uh, powers of a given M primary ideal. And then you just take the powers. Uh, the second example, all of the examples I give are very naturally occurring examples in commutative algebra. The first one, the second one is I have an inclusion of local rings where S dominates R. In other words, uh, the maximal ideal of S contracts the maximal ideal of R. Uh, the maximal ideal of S contracts R in its maximal ideal. And then you just take I to be the powers of the maximal ideal of S contracted to R. Okay, now uh, a third example is I take R to be a uh, local uh, domain and mu to be evaluation uh, with value group Z. Uh, and uh, such that the ring R is dominated by the valuation ring of mu. So in other words, the maximal ideal, the valuation ring intersects R is equal to the maximal ideal of R. And then you can define the valuation ideals, I sub mu of N, or the, the F and R such that mu of F is bigger and equal to N. So then I take the filtration, I is I sub mu of N. Okay, and then the last one is uh, one which will be uh, very uh, important uh, in uh, this uh, talk. Uh, and these are, uh, this is uh, of the divisorial filtrations. So I take R to be a local uh, uh, excellent domain. Uh, excellent uh, basically just means the good properties that one knows and, uh, and loves from algebraic geometry, uh, analytic geometry, and uh, uh, number theory is um, uh, all hold for these rings. 
Okay, so um, I take then a uh, blow up uh, of a um, M primary ideal. So this is the, uh, in fact, the normalization of the blow up of an M primary ideal. And uh, this will have, uh, with except prime, exceptional divisors, E1 out to ER. These are the uh, uh, height one primes, which uh, contract uh, to uh, the maximal ideal. Uh, now, uh, the local rings of uh, these prime divisors are all uh, uh, valuation rings. And I take uh, nu sub EI to be uh, the valuation with valuation ring OXEI. Uh, the valuations of this type are the uh, M valuation uh, in uh, Reese's words, and uh, they are the Reese valuations of the ideal which we blew up. Now, uh, for a1 and AR, uh, non-negative uh, integers, uh, we set D is equal to A1, E1 plus AR, ER. This is a V divisor. And I define I, M, D. It will be the sections gamma OX minus M, A1, E1, minus so on, minus M, A, R, E, R, and I intersect with R. So if R were normal to start with, then uh, you wouldn't have to do this. This would be, these would be M primary ideals. And one can write this in terms of the valuations like this. If I take the M, A, 1 uh, ideal for the valuation nu E, 1, the, uh, the elements of R whose value with respect to E, 1, is uh, bigger and equal to MA1, and I keep intersecting for all of these guys, one gets this. So in fact, you can think of this as the functions in R, the elements of R, uh, which vanish to order bigger and equal to MAI along each AI. Okay, now then I take I of D, my filtration to be IMD. This is called a divisorial filtration. Uh, and uh, the pair, uh, the uh, pair phi from x to spec of r, an expression d is summation a i e i is called a representation. Okay, so the way I've defined this thing, I somewhat abused notation that actually I can go back here and I can uh, start with uh, this type of expression right there. And uh, this, this is defined just purely without any reference to this blow up X. So if you start with something like this, then you can always find some normal variety where the E sub i's live. And then you can, uh, you can represent it in this form on, uh, on that blow up. So there are many, many uh, choices, but these guys are V divisors that, that we don't know if resolution of singularities is true. So we can't really do anything better than, uh, than a normal variety. Okay, so uh, let's look again at these four examples. Uh, the example one, remember we define no Ethereum, that the uh, algebra uh, of, the, uh, I, of the ideals is, uh, uh, is no Ethereum. So the example one is always no Ethereum, of course. It's generated in degree one. However, examples two, three, and four are often not no Ethereum. 
uh, even in regular local rains. Okay, so that's the introduction to uh, filtrations and I've, uh, I've given you some examples, um, or at least I've told you that examples exist of uh, interesting non noetherian filtrations. Okay, now uh, let's go back uh, and to the uh, classical case of filtrations of powers of ideals. Uh, the, um, uh, the, so I'll look at R is a local, uh, is a local uh, ring of dimension D. And then I'll take I to be an M primary ideal. Okay, now in uh, 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 Linguin's uh, uh, talk, uh, he defined uh, this uh, Hilbert Samuel polynomial, the length of R mod I to the M. Uh, this is a polynomial of degree D uh, for M sufficiently large. Okay, and uh, it's written as e to the i over uh, d factorial times m to the d plus lower order terms. And this e of i uh, is a multiplicity of um, r with respect to i. So um, as Lin Guin pointed out, you can always uh, compute e i uh, it from this formula. It's a limit as m goes to infinity of the length of r mod i to the m mod m to the d divided by uh, d factorial. Okay, well, uh, a few years ago, um, I extended this uh, um, to um, the case of, uh, uh, or at least has showed exactly where you can extend it and not to local rings. So let's uh, suppose that R is a local ring of dimension D and I take uh, N of R hat uh, is equal to the nil radical of uh, the completion of R, the emmatic completion of R. Uh, then the limit M, M goes to infinity of the length of R mod I to the M divided by M to the D exists for every M filtration I is equal to I to sub M uh, if and only if the dimension of this nil radical of the completion is less than D. Okay, so uh, what one gets from this is that the limits always exist if R is analytically uh, unramified. So that just means the completion of R is reduced or if R is a reduced excellent local ring. So uh, this, uh, this allows us to uh, define uh, the multiplicity of the filtration uh, I uh, as E of I is equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of the length of r mod i sub n m to the d divided by a d factorial uh, when it exists. Dale, okay. there's a question. Um, when the nil radical has dimension d, what happens? Uh, then it's, this is, uh, it's an if and only a statement that uh, that means if it's not, uh, if the nil radical has dimension d, uh, then uh, there is a, uh, then you can uh, find a filtration where uh, uh, the limit doesn't exist. So if you want all limits of this type for these M filtrations to exist, 
this, this characterizes, this new radical condition characterizes for which rings this, these limits always exist. Okay, is that, that answer the question? Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna say a little bit uh, more about background um, uh, about this. Uh, this uh, uh, the existence of this limit was proven in some cases by Ein Lazarfeld uh, Smith and by Mustada. Uh, and the existence of the limit is proven for local rings of closed points on varieties over an algebraically closed field by Lazarfeld and Mustada using methods of algebraic geometry. All of these assumptions are used in their proof. Uh, they use the method of counting asymptotic vector space dimensions of graded families using Ukunkov bodies, which was uh, developed by Ukunkov, Kave, Kovansky, and Lazarfeld Mustada. I mean, this, this paper is the one that got me going on this subject. And uh, we also use this, this wonderful uh, method uh, to, uh, to compute limits. Okay, also the fact that the dimension, if you take a ring and its dimension of its nil radical is equal to the dimension of the ring, uh, then there always exists a filtration without a limit. And this was observed by Dow and Smirnoff. Okay, now uh, let's move on to, uh, to mixed multiplicities. Uh, so uh, this, is a, um, uh, this is a famous theorem and uh, the uh, mixed multiplicities appear uh, in a paper by a student of Greece, uh, Bhattacharya, uh, and also uh, independently uh, in a, by uh, Rieslayer and Tessier. So uh, this is a classical statement for uh, M primary ideals. So let's let I1 uh, to R, IR be M uh, primary ideals. Uh, then for all n1 out to nr, which are natural numbers, uh, with their sum sufficiently large, that we have the length of r mod i1 n1 i r nr. This is actually is equal to a polynomial in n1 out to nr of, of uh, degree T, degree D, that's the dimension of the ring. Uh, and uh, in fact, if I write it out, it's very important, the, the leading terms, the, the polynomial, the homogeneous polynomial of degree D. And this is, notation which I believe was introduced by um, uh, Tessier and it's also um, something I meant to mention is that all of this classical theory of uh, multiplicities and mixed multiplicities is, uh, is explained uh, beautifully in a, a book on this subject by um, uh, Irena Swanson and Craig Unicke. So for instance, the development of this is in there. Okay, so it's this plus lower order terms. Okay, but I'm going to take this polynomial over here and I'm going to, this homogeneous polynomial and I'm gonna call it HN1 R out to NR. So what we're going to do next is uh, generalize this to, um, uh, to filtrations. So in filtrations, uh, you can't possibly have a polynomial. So, but let me, uh, what you can do is if you look at this formula, you see that we can uh, recover uh, HN1 out to NR and in this way, that if I take the limit as M goes to infinity, a length of R mod I1 M N1 
times I R M N R, and I divide that by M D, then that's actually going to be this homogeneous polynomial H N one H N R, and this is for all N one up to N R in N, right? Because you're going when you're taking the limit, you're going far enough out, and then you kill these lower order terms. Okay, so this, uh, this theorem uh, generalizes to filtrations. The only thing is that uh, while these uh, so-called uh, mixed multiplicities, uh, these E sub I1, D1 up to IR, DR, uh, those are positive integers uh, for, um, for the uh, mixed multiplicities of ideals, but all you know about them is that they're non-negative real numbers, and they can be zero, but they cannot be zero for uh, in the situation which for that I'm talking about here. Okay, so um, the, let's uh, let's look at the um, at uh, this theorem over here. Uh, and this is a theorem with myself, uh, Ranga Masakar and Hema Srinivasan. Uh, and uh, let's suppose that R is a local ring of dimension D uh, such that the dimension of the nil radical of the completion is less than D. And let's take some M, fight, M filtrations. R of them. Okay, so these are M filtrations. Uh, then we get the exact same statement that if I take the polynomial Pn1 to Nr, uh, and uh, you take the limit as m goes to infinity of the length of R mod I1 m n1 out to I R m n n R divided by m to the d. Uh, this is actually a homogeneous polynomial of degree d. of degree D for all N1 out to NR in N. Okay, so given this, then it's very natural how we define the mixed multiplicities. They're, they just come uh, from the coefficients of this polynomial. So we write it in such a way, we write this out uh, to define the multiplicities, mixed multiplicities. So this is the summation d1 plus dr is equal to d, uh, and to be uh, in agreement with the case of ideals, we write it like this, using the uh, classical uh, notation. And uh, these are the uh, so-called uh, mixed multiplicities. And they are in uh, their uh, non-negative elements of the reals. But even in uh, uh, in geometrically defined uh, examples, that one can uh, they can actually be real numbers. That we'll say a little bit more about this later. Uh, but they actually en enjoy uh, many of the good properties uh, of um, of the multiplic mixed multiplicities of ideals. Uh, I will mention one form, one uh, simple formula that we will need later, that you can recover uh, the ordinary multiplicities of the ideals I1 out to IR uh, from uh, this polynomial, and they are uh, the E sub I upper D uh, term. Okay, now, um, what we want to do is uh, look at, uh, at a theorem of Reese, which in fact, uh, Linguin mentioned uh, also. So uh, to do this, uh, and in fact, this 
leads into one of the interesting, uh, even somewhat uh, unknown, unknown and mysterious areas of this, which if I have time at the end, I'll come back to. Uh, but uh, we need to, let's look at, uh, at uh, integral closure of a filtration. So let's take a filtration and then let's look at the integral closure of its algebra. So I take uh, uh, the, direct sum, the summation n bigger than or equal to zero i sub n t sub n uh, in the ring of summation n bigger than or equal to zero i sub n t sub n in the ring r adjoined t. So actually, the essential case in all of this is when R is normal. So if you want to, uh, you, can, you can think about uh, that. Uh, so in fact, uh, this is a classical result for um, Noetherian filtrations, but I'll just mention what that is. It's the, it's the direct sum of the uh, integral closures of the ideals I sub n. is the integral closure of the ideal uh, I sub n. Okay, it could, this could be some terrible uh, non-Noetherian uh, non, uh, uh, thing. Okay, um, all right, so um, let me see now that um, So let me look at my time here that it's, I have here, it's, it's, I have until, no, I have until 5.30, right? Is that correct? So I think, um, um, or my time. So I think I'm okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is, this, we look at this object and uh, using this, I'm going to state uh, Reese's famous theorem. That uh, we suppose that I prime contained in I are M primary ideals. And uh, he has requires that N is formally equidimensional. Uh, then the following are equivalent. Okay, there's, a, in fact, a, the first one is that the multiplicity of R with respect to I prime is the uh, multiplicity of uh, R with respect to I. Now, the second one is that if I took the algebra of powers of I prime and I take its integral closure, that's equal to the algebra of the powers i to the ntn and taking its integral closure. So in fact, actually, that's equivalent to the completion of i prime being the completion of i. Now, Reese originally, he proved one equivalent to three. And in fact, two implies one is true in arbitrary local rings. But uh, I put in the second condition because this is the form of this which generalizes to filtrations. So in fact, phrased this way, we can at least ask this question. Uh, let's suppose that we take filtrations, I prime is equal to I N prime, uh, uh, which is contained I N prime, which is contained in I, which is I sub N. That means I N prime contained in I N for all N. Uh, and these are M filtrations. And then one can ask whether these one and two phrase suitably um, are equivalent. And the second one then of course is we have to write out the algebra I sub the likely non-Noetherian algebra and take its integral closure and they both have to be the same. So we can ask 
if these conditions are equivalent. Okay, so uh, let me say here that uh, two implies one is true for M filtrations. Uh, if, of course, we need our condition about the dimension of the nil radical, the completion is less than D. And this was also proved uh, with uh, uh, Prenga Masarkar and Hema Srinivasan. Okay, but we also showed that one implies two is false for arbitrary filtrations. Okay, but it turns out that this theorem is true for divisorial filtrations. Okay, so the first thing to observe is that for a divisorial filtration, this um, ring right here, this is always fine. This is always, uh, uh, well, the before you take the integral closure, it's already integral, integrally closed. So let me write this out, that if I of D is a div divisorial M filtration, then this algebra is already integrally closed. Okay, so somehow this statement too becomes much simpler. Okay, so the following theorem gives the, the Ries theorem for filtrations. Okay, so um, that, uh, this is the, the one equivalent to two. Okay, so for this one, um, I suppose that R is an excellent local domain. And uh, I take I to be any M filtration. And I take I of D to be a divisorial M filtration. And we have this condition such that I of D is contained in I. Uh, then uh, we have this condition that E of the multiplicities are the same if and only if the filtrations are the same. So remember in this case, the, uh, uh, the algebra of, um, uh, of uh, of I of D has to be integrally closed. And since it's contained in I, that, that forces this one to be integrally closed too. Okay, so uh, this is a, um, uh, this is a, um, uh, this is uh, this theorem. Uh, and- uh, Yeah, there's uh, another question about whether or not one implies two for no theory infiltrations. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I said that it's, uh, that one implies two is false for arbitrary filtrations, but for no implies, filtrations. Oh, I think it's true. Yeah, it's true for uh, no Ethereum filtrations. Yes. In fact, whenever you have an arbitrary, whenever you have a no Ethereum filtration, you can, all, any question about it, you can reduce by taking a Veronese to, uh, to being a question about just powers of ideals. And then, um, and then you, uh, and then of course it's all classical. And maybe this is a good time to mention that that actually, like in constructing these uh, the um, the um, mixed multiplicities, uh, uh, that's sort of what the step is: is that you use all of, use a lot of this convex geometry to end up approximating things better and better. And you using the old, the old classical theory of, uh, of these, of the old masters uh, to, um, for the powers of ideals. And then you approximate and show that everything converges nicely. 
Uh, but uh, what the interesting thing is that uh, all this classical uh, machinery about the superficial elements and so on, that's completely lost when you go to these uh, non noetherian filtrations. Or if there's anything you can say about it, you'd have to go to some sort of giant infinite family. Okay, so um, now uh, let me um, uh, move on now uh, to uh, talking about Minkowski inequalities. Uh, so the uh, Minkowski inequalities uh, for uh, mixed uh, multiplicities of M primary ideals in local rings Uh, were proven by Tessier and Reese and Sharp in dimension uh, two. And uh, Dan Katz, he got it in all dimensions. Uh, so uh, uh, they are, this is a theorem which goes through completely for the filtrations. Uh, they, um, that in fact, in general, the uh, inequalities go through, uh, but then there's problems in characterizations of, um, of equality that you have to pass to uh, divisorial filtrations or something like that. Uh, so let me state uh, this theorem for filtrations. Uh, this is again uh, with uh, uh, Prangama Sarkar and Hema Srinivasan. Uh, so, um, and this is the Minkowski inequalities uh, for filtrations. Okay, so uh, let's suppose that R is a d dimensional local ring with the dimension of the nil radical of r hat less than d. Now let's let i1 and i2 be m filtrations. Okay, and let's set e sub i, this is, this is the classical uh, uh, notation. We write this as the mixed multiplicity i1 di I to I. Uh, then the EI squared is less than or equal to E minus one times EI plus one for one I between one and D minus one. Uh, this should be an R, it doesn't look like an R. Okay, so this is the primary one which everything else uh, follows for. So this since I don't want to write a lot out, that this uh, implies a series of other nice inequalities. Uh, and particularly what's usually called the Minkowski inequality, which is this one, which is the multiplicity of I1 times I2 uh, one over D less than or equal to E I one, one over D plus E I two, one over D. And what is this? This is the filtration where you multiply the nth polynomials in each filtration. So this is the famous uh, Minkowski inequality. Uh, and uh, this inequality star uh, was proven by Mastada for regular local rings with algebraically closed residue fields earlier. Uh, and now um, I will uh, talk about uh, a theorem of uh, Tessier, Brees, and Sharp, and Katz. They characterize when equality holds, um, holds uh, in the Minkowski inequality for ideals. So um, it might uh, might be that I should wait, I should make a break now 
and I'll come to this. I'll talk about the uh, Minkowski uh, uh, equality uh, in the next half of this talk. Dale, if you're not too busy, I had a question. This is David. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a the uh, paper that I wrote with Harold Levine about the yep. um, and Bernard wrote a uh, an appendix. Right, and that had to do with Minkowski and equality. Right, that's the paper I was referring to. That's uh, where he that's where he uh, where he proved that those inequalities and. Uh, to interject a, a personal note that uh, some years ago in various contexts, I was getting interested in um, uh, in inequalities and in, uh, commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. And uh, I was talking with Bernard about this and uh, he gave me this big file of paper, old papers of Minkowski, which, mm. uh, which uh, mm. he, he thought I should read. And I regret to say I haven't, but I'm becoming mm. more and more convinced as time goes on that it would be a very good idea to uh, to study mm -hmm. carefully the, the works of Minkowski. Also, your your formula is log concavity or log something or other, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah, that's the word. Yeah. And nowadays, that's that's the way people are proving it for all kinds of other sequences. There's a big literature proving that using um, the Hodge theory for matroids and things like that. Yeah, well, um, I hope I have time. I very much want to get into all of this, but actually that uh, we will see the Brun-Minkowski theorem, theorem mm -hmm. in convex geometry uh, plays a role in the, uh, the second uh, half. So, uh, good, good. so somehow this whole, uh, uh, this convex geometry seems to be a very important uh, field. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's about time we can get started again. But before, there, there is one question that just popped up, which is uh, asking if, the Minkowski holds for one over D. Does it also hold for one over L, where L is less than D? Um, you know, I don't know. But one thing I do know that's, uh, that's important is there's a condition when equality holds, which means a kind of uh, linearity, if you will, for this. And this is, uh, this is very important. So um, I think this is the theorem that uh, here. So if it holds for different values of L's, that would be some sort of um, uh, uh, a uh, something that should follow just from looking at the inequalities and de deducing it. Uh, but offhand, I don't know. I'm not very fast at working these kinds of things out. It doesn't seem to be something that's been looked at a lot classically. So maybe there isn't a really, maybe a, not a lot can be done with that, but I don't know, you never know. Okay, so let me get, uh, let me get started here. Um, so I was going to talk about this, uh, this theorem of uh, Tessier, Reese, and Sharp and Katz. and cats. Uh, so what did they prove? They, you take R to be, well, to get the characterization, you need a d-dimensional, formally equidimensional local ring. Uh, and uh, I1, I2 are M primary ideals. Uh, then uh, the following are equivalent. Uh, the first statement is that the Minkowski inequality is an equality. So I will call it the Minkowski equality, E of I1 times I2, one to the D, D through is equal to E to the I1, one to the D plus E to the I, of I2, one to the D, this holds. Okay, now the second statement is that uh, there exist uh, positive integers A and B such that uh, if I take the integral closure of I1 A n 
times Tn An. Uh, this is the integral closure of the algebra I2 Bn Tn. And uh, the third statement is that there exist uh, positive integers a, B, uh, such uh, that I1 A integral closure, that ideal is the integral closure of I2 to the B. Okay, so of course, the, the way these guys uh, phrased this was that uh, one is equivalent to three. Uh, but I put in a statement two uh, to make this a question that one can ask uh, about um, filtrations. Okay, so let me, uh, let me put this in, this question. Uh, suppose I1 and I2 are M filtrations. Uh, and then the question is, are uh, uh, the following two conditions equivalent. So the first one is that the Minkowski equality E of I1 I2 D root is equal to E I1 D root plus E of I2 D root, whether that's actually an equality and the second statement is that there exist positive integers a, b, such that the summation n bigger and equal to um, zero of the integral closure of the algebra i1, a, and t, n is the integral closure of the algebra of for I T B N summation I to B N T N. So uh, this would give a, an exact um, uh, translation of the uh, uh, Tessier, Reese, Sharp, and Katz theorem uh, for ideals. Okay, well, let's see what's, uh, what's known here. Uh, the first uh, statement is that two implies one is true for arbitrary M filtrations if the dimension of the nil radical of R hat is less than D, the assumption we need to get limits. Uh, but one implies two is false for arbitrary, arbitrary M filtrations. And this is, in fact, an, a simple example of this uh, appears in the paper uh, with uh, Sarkar and Srinivasan. Okay, uh, now, however, uh, this theorem is true for divisorial filtrations. Okay, and uh, that's uh, what I want to talk about. That's something that uh, I've found uh, just uh, recently, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, which is that the uh, Tessier, Greece, uh, Sharp, um, Katz theorem is true for divisorial filtrations. Okay, so remember we have this business where statement two uh, up here becomes very simple. Uh, because the integral closure of a, well, uh, the algebra from a, um, from a divisor is always integrally closed. So what is this, uh, this theorem uh, that, again, I start out with uh, that R is an excellent local domain and I let I of D1 and I of D2 be divisorial M filtrations. Uh, then the Minkowski uh, equality holds uh, 
between I of D1 and I of D2, uh, if and only if uh, there exist A and B, in, uh, which are positive integers, uh, such that I of A M D1 is equal to I of B M D2 uh, for M in N. Okay, so this gets exactly the, the Reese, uh, uh, the um, Tessier Sharp, uh, Reese Sharp Katz theorem uh, for filtrations. Okay, so uh, one thing, uh, let me mention here that um, about a year ago, I got this uh, in the case where dimension D is equal to two. Uh, so two dimensional rings. And uh, this one, I used the theory of um, Zariski decomposition and also uh, the fact that uh, the intersection form for exceptional uh, divisors uh, in a, um, for um, blowing up an M primary ideals, that that will be negative definite. And uh, there's a lot of nice things happening there which uh, do not generalize or generalize very badly to higher dimensions. So I wasn't really terribly optimistic about this, but uh, it did turn out that it went, uh, went through uh, completely. Uh, so let me uh, fill in the canvas a little bit of this theorem about how it goes and, and some things that, uh, that lie, uh, lie in the proof. There's one question. Okay, so know, now um, these, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the question, if you replace excellent ring in your assumption with regular local ring, what can, what can you say? Um, I haven't uh, thought about it because um, uh, I'm using a lot of kind of uh, geometric stuff in it. And I think, well, I know Crystal Rodhouse has some old examples of regular local rings, which are not excellent. So the thing what I really need is, for instance, like, like does hold true for, uh, as Reese shows, for analytically unramified local rings is that, uh, is, is somehow that when you blow up a uh, maximal ideal that you get a, um, you, you uh, uh, and then you take the normalization, uh, that's finite. So I guess uh, regular local rings are analytically unramified. And in fact, they're analytically irreducible, I guess. So from this, I think, I believe everything goes through, uh, but I'm a little nervous about it. But that's, this case, I'm pretty sure of. I think it would go through for a regular local ring, but I'm just speaking off the top of my head and I'm, uh, I haven't checked verified that. There are some, some things which don't behave well for non-excellent uh, local rings, regular local rings. But I, maybe this is a time to mention it. it. It looks like this theory would go through for uh, unramified local rings, plot maybe or probably plus something, where I haven't quite worked all this, this out. As I mentioned, uh, this has all just happened. And uh, maybe I'll try to work this out, but it's, you need to be very, very careful when you go to non-excellent rings, it's especially when you're trying to use geometric arguments. Okay, so um, let me talk about this. Let's uh, let uh, R uh, be a D-dimensional uh, normal excellent uh, local domain. And I take I to be I sub N and M filtration. And uh, I take mu to be an M valuation. So that corresponds to divisor and some blow up. So let's uh, let uh, tau mu M of the filtration I is mu of the ideal I sub M uh, which is the minimum of the values mu of f such that f is in im. That's, a, um, that's an integer. Now I define uh, gamma mu i is equal to the infimum over m uh, tau mu m i over m. Okay, so where this concept really helps you is when you have a divisorial divisorial M filtration. So let I of D be a divisorial M valuation. 
Okay, so, um, okay, and now what I'm going to do, remember we can always represent this on some actual blow up. Okay, so let's take some, uh, be the blow up of an M primary ideal with prime exceptional divisors uh, E1 uh, to ER such that X is normal. And if I take D is A1 E1 plus AR ER, this is a representation of I of D. Okay, so I'm kind of repeating things I said at the beginning right now. I take uh, nu sub EI uh, be uh, the M valuation with a valuation ring OXEI. And then I, do, I consider this new invariant. I'm going to write it slightly different. The gamma EID is gamma nu sub EI of the filtration I of D. Okay, now we have this very important inequality that gamma EID is bigger and equal to AI for all I. And if I take X to be equal to the roundup of a real number X, we can compute what IMD is uh, from this real divisor. Something I should mention is these gamma E sub I's for divisors can often be actual real numbers, not, uh, not integers, even though I'm starting with an integral divisor. Uh, and this is the same thing as the gamma OX uh, minus uh, MD, and that's equal to I, the ideal in the filtration MD, and this is for all M and N. So this is a kind of boundedness condition which is, uh, allows us to do something. So what one sh the way to think about this is that M sub AI is the prescribed order of vanishing, of elements of I, M, D along E sub I, and M gamma E sub I, D is asymptotically the actual, the actual, the order, the actual order of vanishing. Okay, so what you see from this formula up here uh, is this formula uh, is that if you can have many different divisors which give the same filtration, but somehow this particular filtration right here, this really determines the uh, divisor. So if you want to know if two filtrations are the same, that means their gamma sub EI has to be the same. Okay, and as I mentioned, this gamma EID can be an irrational number if D is bigger than two. Now, the theorem E, uh, the, uh, this uh, Minkowski e equality uh, theorem, uh, follows from uh, this following uh, theorem. Uh, let's suppose that um, R is a D dimensional normal excellent local domain. And let's let I of D1 and I of D2 uh, be uh, divisorial M filtrations. Uh, now let's let X from, uh, let's let uh, X to spec of R be a representation, a common representation of D1 
equals summation alpha i e i and d2 is summation beta i e i. And then i d1 and i d2 satisfy the Minkowski equality uh, if and only if uh, this statement holds that the ratios of the gamma e sub i d2 over gamma e sub i d1 is gamma e j d2 over gamma e j d1 for all i j between one and r, that they have these common uh, ratios. Okay, so uh, these numbers are always positive in a situation. Uh, when this happens, we get something else. And in fact, this is probably the harder part to get, this number one. But uh, for a while, I was stuck on two, which uh, I didn't know uh, would be true. So remember the gamma e sub i's and the multiplicities can be irrational numbers. So in order to get those integers a, b, uh, I need uh, this statement. That these ratios have to actually be a rational number. And this is with a and b positive uh, integers. Okay, and so these are kind of independent things. Um, I think I'll be able to talk a little bit about how you get number one, which is, I think, the more interesting part. Uh, number two actually involves some generalization of the so-called asymptotic Samuel function. And uh, it works for integral or rational divisors, but not for real, uh, real divisors. For real divisors, this, this thing can actually be an irrational number. That's not so hard to find. Okay, so... Once we've get, gotten this, then we can finish up easily. And I'll just say how we do this by our observations we had that the, the ide ideal of AMD1, remember that we know is gamma x ox of minus of the greatest uh, divisor in M A gamma EI D1 EI. And then from these inequalities that we've got right here, from these, these equalities, or I guess what we really want is this one over here, where A and B are integers, uh, this is equal to gamma x ox minus summation i equals one to r m b gamma ei d2 ei. And remember, this is exactly i b m d2. So that gives the, uh, so that's how we can, uh, we get this. So even though the multiplicities and uh, the gamma C sub i's are irrational numbers, somehow this works up being a rational number. Okay, so uh, I'll say a little bit um, about the, uh, uh, I'll see, I'm not going to be able to say as much as I wanted to, but let me try to say a little bit in a few minutes about the outline of the, uh, uh, of the proof of statement one of theorem F. Okay, so uh, uh, the first thing uh, is that the uh, uh, Minkowski equality implies also using the other other uh, Minkowski inequalities that you can just write this in this very nice form that uh, uh, I need to say what this is. This is this limit as n goes to infinity of the length of r mod i m n one d one i m n two d two uh, divided by m to the d. This has this very simple uh, nice form. Uh, where E naught is equal to E I D one and E D is equal to E I D two. 
Uh, now let's take mu and m valuation. Oh boy, it did it again. No, are you, is it gone? No, it's still there. Good, okay. Okay, and then now uh, let's let V from R into ZD. So let's let this be a valuation such that V starts with mu and then there's other stuff after it. So uh, that the word for this is that uh, nu is composite with mu. Okay, and I take uh, gamma n1 n2 is uh, be the semi group uh, nu fm such that f is in i m n1 d1 i m n2 d2 and this is contained in n d plus one and I take gamma n1 n2 to be the uh, intersection in R D plus one of the closure in the Euclidean topology of the real cone generated by gamma N one N two with the hyperplane at passing through um, uh, the one at the last coordinate. So uh, I also need to define this for um, R. And uh, then I have uh, associated uh, semi-group and uh, convex bodies delta zero zero. So uh, what I need to do is have, do this uniformly uh, for all N1 and N2. So there, there exists uh, phi in R uh, bigger than zero, a positive real number, uh, such that uh, letting uh, H phi N1 N2 minus is equal to X1 XD and RD uh, such that X1 plus XD is less than or equal to phi E naught one to the D N1 plus phi E sub D one to the D N2. This is carefully charged this this choice of um, family of uh, half spaces is carefully chosen to make everything work out. Uh, then I define uh, these uh, 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 convex bodies. So in fact, these sets over here, the delta N1, N2, they're convex, but they're not compact. So I intersect with this half space to get something which is compact. I do the same thing with N1, N2. And in fact, this involves some uh, commutative algebra, including some uh, theorem of Reese in order to, uh, to get this, that such a thing exists, which has a good property. The good property is that when you get above the, the part that's in, del in these two deltas, which is above this hyperplane, that they're the same. Okay, now uh, we have that original function fn1 n2, which computes the mixed multiplicities. This is some number delta times the volume of delta phi n1 n2 minus the volume of delta phi n1 n2, these two convex bodies. And this is for all n1 n2 in n, and this is delta is the index of the residue fields of the valuation ring and uh, our original uh, local rings. So uh, this proof uses the method of computing asymptotic vector space dimensions of graded families using Okunkov bodies, which was developed by Okunkov, Lazarfeld, and Mostada, and Ave Kavonsky. And as I mentioned, I learned this from the paper of Lazarfeld and Mostada. Uh, and to me, this math is reminiscent of Ms. Minkowski's geometric techniques in number theory. Okay, so uh, let's see how we're doing. Okay, so uh, we take, uh, we look at this delta R. This is, uh, this is the closed, this is actually a closed convex cone. This one is much nicer than the other guys. This is a closed convex cone with vertex at the origin. Uh, this is uh, because uh, 
the value of uh, one is zero. Okay, you don't have units in the other, uh, in the other ideals. Uh, now, one, using this, one can compute that the volume of the contribution to this formula uh, from R is just N1 E naught 1 D plus N2 E D 1 D uh, raised to the D power uh, times uh, some uh, constant tau, which is in fact the volume of delta R cut uh, with the uh, part of the, uh, the hyperplane x1 plus xd is equal to one and below that. Okay, so then uh, from this, uh, we can define a new function, which is h of n1, n2, which is the volume of delta phi n1, n2, uh, that convex body. And this thing from our calculations, if we put this together, this is volume of delta phi n1, n2 minus f n1, n2 over delta d uh, factorial. And remember, f of n1, n2 uh, also had a form like that. That's why we chose this hyperplane. And this is equal then uh, to uh, lambda for some constant n1 plus e d, d root, n, d through to that, n2 to the d for some lambda and some positive lambda. Okay, so now we go properly to convex geometry. So let's let uh, g uh, n1 n2 uh, equals the volume of n1 delta phi 1 0 plus n2 delta phi 0 1. Okay, this is the so-called Minkowski sum. And this is a uh, re classical result in convex geometry uh, dating uh, back at least to Minkowski that this is a homogeneous real uh, polynomial uh, of degree D for all real num positive re non-negative real numbers. Uh, so the coefficients of G are called mixed volumes. Now, if I look at the, the way I've set this up, if I look at the Minkowski sum, n1 delta phi 1 0 plus n2 delta phi 0 1. This is contained in this strange object delta phi n1 n2. This is just a statement that i want the first i1 to the n1 times i2 to the n2 is contained in the i n1 n uh, times i2 n2. Okay, so this tells you that uh, for the volumes that the volume that one uh, gets from uh, the Minkowski sum is to be less or equal to uh, the volume of this guy. So now what I do is I look at, um, at, uh, this, uh, at, this, uh, uh, at these facts that G of H1, we compute them. These are G of one zero and H one zero is the volume of the delta phi one zero. This in fact has to be zero, uh, greater than zero since it's a divisorial filtration. And also we have g of zero one uh, has to be h of zero one, which is bigger than zero. So then we start looking uh, at uh, this inequality. This is one minus t uh, h one zero one to the d plus t h zero one uh, one to the d. Uh, this one computes uh, using um, just plugging into that simple form we have of, uh, for H. And then we know then that this is G of one, zero, one to the D plus T G zero, one, one to the D. And now this is where I use the Brun Minkowski inequality. This is the so called uh, Brun. Let me get this. The uh, Brun. Minkowski inequality. Okay, and this guy we know, we've seen up above that that's less than or equal to H one minus T one to the D. And this is for, well, within this range. Okay, so we see this tells us because we end up with what we started with that the Brun Minkowski inequality is actually an equality. 
So it implies there's equality in the Brun Minkowski inequality. So this is another part of the Brun Minkowski theorem that the delta phi one zero and delta phi zero one are homothetic is the word they use. So what does that mean? Uh, that there, what is happening? Okay, I'm back. Hopefully, now what? Okay, I'm back, okay. So that means that uh, uh, there exists uh, T from RD to RD, uh, where T of X is C times X plus gamma, where C is a positive real number and gamma is some element of RD, uh, such that uh, T of uh, delta phi uh, one zero equals delta phi zero one. Now it turns out that we have just enough information. We know almost nothing about these guys, these convex uh, bodies, but we know just enough about them that we can calculate that that number C is ED one D we can determine, we know their volumes, and also one can check that the uh, gamma is zero. So this implies uh, that uh, we have this equality, that if I rescale delta phi one zero, multiplying by E sub D to the one to the D, that's the rescaling of delta phi zero one, multiplying by the multiplicity of D one and the D roots. Okay, so now I'll quickly finish up um, with, uh, there's a, a last point in here, is we remember that V is mu and then something. So if I look at uh, delta one zero and I project down onto the first axis, the real axis, that actually tells you what uh, gamma mu D one is. Okay, and a similar statement uh, for uh, D two. So with all this information we have, if I look at any of the EJ, that then uh, we then get that gamma of EJ D1 over E naught one over D, that's actually equal to gamma EJ D2 over E, D, D, e sub D one to the D for one, J between one and R. Okay, and that's enough to imply the statement one of theorem H. Okay, which remember we saw from that, that from this you get uh, equality of I A M D and I M B D two for all M. So, um, so I will stop here then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any final questions? Okay, there's a question that popped up. Um, in your filtration setup, what ensures positive multiplicities? Um, it's because it's a divisor that for arbitrary filtrations, you can easily get things which are, uh, for which uh, uh, you don't have this, but uh, for which it's zero. But um, uh, it's, uh, it's the thing is that it will, uh, the divisor will contain an ample divisor. So that ample divisor will give you some positive volume. But you can always find filtrations for which, like, just take x, y, x, y squared, x, y cubed, so on, in a, in a polynomial ring and two, two variables, and that will have zero as a limit. Okay, are there any other questions? I, I might add that in our situation, um, where you're looking, well, normal rings are analytically uh, ramified, uh, sorry, analytically irreducible. And in this situation, all of the, if, if the um, multiplicities of your two original filtrations are positive, then all the mixed mul multiplicities are filtrate, uh, of the filtration are positive. And this is something I showed uh, last year with uh, Jugal Verma and Hema Srinivasan, but that's, that's at least implicit in all of this.